Over the past week or so, you have probably heard the word flood, flooding, or flooded many times. Perhaps this was a headline from a few years ago. You may have missed it. Pretty big flood. Also, you may also recall, recall a more recent flood. Now, the following account may be true. You decide. It was perhaps one of the worst floods in the history of the city, and low-lying areas had already been turned into waterfront properties. And the rising mixture of water and mud and ice chunks and slush and frazzle ice, the detritus of demolished buildings, small automobiles, and assorted trash bins kept coming. Now, Alexander, he'd heard the news. He received some evacuation warnings that the waters were rising. And being a good Christian, Alexander decided to pray. In his mind were words of promise from God that all believers, all good Christians, would be taken care of and that all good things would come to those who honored the Lord's way. As he prayed, he was feeling the assurance that God would take care of him when he heard an amplified voice telling him and his neighbors to head for higher ground. Standing on his porch with flood waters uh, lapping at the front steps, he saw some armored reservists in their amphibian vehicles moving down the neighborhood and shouting out warnings. Alexander shouted back, God will take care of me. The water now reached the top steps, was splashing at his door, so Alexander moved up a floor. And uh, he got to the second floor of the house, and he heard another sound, and this was the sound of some powerful marine engines, and he peered out one of his second floor windows, and he still had this attitude of prayer in his head that God was going to take care of him, and he noticed the... Uh, Local Navy reservists were there in one of their super boats, and above the roar of their powerful engine, they were going house to house and telling people, come, we'll rescue you. Oh, Alexander, he, he shouted back to them, I'm okay, God will take care of me, he's promised it. And as he then moved to the roof, because the waters got a little bit higher, he got to the roof and he heard the... Uh, unusual and distinctive sound of a griffin helicopter. And amidst the chop, 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 chop sound, he heard a voice. Get in the sling. We will rescue you. Alex paused for a moment, thinking of all the promises of God to take care of him when things got bad and to always do the best of him. And as he was thinking and praying, a surge of water swept him off the roof. At the proverbial gates to heaven, Alexander had some questions for St. Peter. It's not fair. God promised to take care of me. So St. Peter checked his computer and spoke. Oh, Alex, I see here, yes, it is true that God has promised to take care of you. In fact, the record shows that you asked and asked and asked. So God sent you the army the Navy, and the Air Force to rescue you. Looks like you blew it. <laughs> oh, my God, said Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have experienced events in your life that were tragic. You could truly say to someone, I've been there, I've done that, I've worked through, and well, ladies and gentlemen, a question for you. Does the name Caden Young register with you? Does the account of a three-year-old boy swept from his mother's arms into the raging Grand River bring vivid pictures to your mind and guilt-wrenching feelings and emotions to your heart? Another question. If the opportunity came up, what do you think you could say 
to Caden's mother, father, and grandparents. Perhaps the most devastating event in life is a tragic death. How do you respond? Modern technology makes sure that we all know about the latest tragedy. However, sometimes the reality of tragic events settles in our life. And what do you say to the family? What do you say to Caden's mom? What do you say to their friends? What do you say to yourself? Oh, how do you respond? How do I respond? During my years as a parish minister, I experienced many wonderful, wonderful thank you God events. And I experienced the aftermath of assorted tragedies. Almost you name it, I'd been there. An early morning call informed me that a church member's daughter, son-in-law, and two grandchildren had died in an early morning house fire. As I drove to the still smoldering scene and then to the church member's home, I kept thinking, what can I say to the mothers, the husband, other family members? Oh, I held their hands, I offered a prayer, and then I headed back to start preparing for probably the most unusual, tragic funeral that I'd ever had to conduct. The following day was Communion Sunday in the parish I served. This is the day after the tragedy of the house fire. And I was astounded on that morning, and my memory contains that easy to recall powerful visual memory. If I, if I looked right now, I can picture the church I was in, I can picture the way the seats were set up on that day, because it was a Communion Sunday and we had a Beauty, we were able to put the communion table in front of all the people sitting around it. And I looked over in that corner, and there, sitting side by side, was the mother and the other mother of the children who had perished. Whoa! Awesome! I was surprised. I was shocked. I was astonished. And then... The rest of the people suddenly realized who was there and had heard over the news. And so there were many additional hugs and tears and prayers and compassion placed upon these two mothers who blew me away. Day after day, their family was wiped out. There they were in church to worship. A question. Does it seem to you that sometimes it's too easy to forget about good happenings of life and fail to rehearse the events and the circumstances that we had given God credit for. Well, maybe. The scripture reading that uh, Mr. Thompson read. The scripture reading take, took care, it was a reading event just a few months after the Israelite people had escaped from Egypt and gone through the Red Sea and Holy Moses, he was the leader of the Israelites. He heard the I'm hungry complaints by the people. The miracle of quails that had come to feed them and the manna that fell from heaven to feed them seemed to have been forgotten. And Moses' complaint department received notice that the people were grumbling. Well, we have no water. Are you going to starve our children and our livestock to death? Moses was frustrated, so he asked God, what am I going to do with these people? In colloquial language, he might think, what the blank is wrong with them? <laughs> I didn't use that word, did I? I heard you fill it in. Well, upon divine direction, you heard it read, he took the magic staff that uh, had used to part the Red Sea and hit this special rock. 
he wasn't one of those diviners that you know wiggled it away and found it. God told him where to hit it. And just to make sure they remembered the miracle of that rock just gushing out enough water to feed a whack of people and water their livestock and stop their children from dehydrating, he gave those special names to that particular place in their history. I'm assuming that all of us have or will face circumstances in life when you've called on God and it seems there was no response. Now, does God give us the silent treatment? Is God listening? Does God really care? Why won't God help me? Remember the man on the roof. Too often I have heard, and I am sure I will hear, words that were intended to be comforting that would suggest to the person experiencing the tragedy that God has a better plan for you. Do you buy into that style of thinking? I have to bite my tongue when someone tells me God has something better in mind for someone who has just faced a tragedy. Do I say to the mothers who lost their family, God has a better plan for you? The one lady's husband suffered from post-traumatic stress, and they didn't call it then. He just was a good old alcoholic and was always out. He would have probably punched me out. Sadly, someone sometime will try to tell Caden Young's mother that God has a better plan. Would I tell our current Prime Minister that the tragic avalanche and drowning of his younger brother Michael several years ago was part of some divine greater plan? Ladies and gentlemen, like Mash's Colonel Potter, I might reply, Buffalo bagels. Or he sometimes said, horse hockey. If you've never played horse hockey, you don't know what I'm talking about. Is the God you choose to worship the kind of God who would manipulate people? Is this the type of God that you believe in or others believe in? Now, as I move towards my conclusion, what can we do when bad things happen personally or to other people? What do we say when God doesn't seem to respond, doesn't seem to be there? No one home. What do you do? Do you get angry? Are we disappointed? Do we sense the spirit of precious Lord take my hand? <sighs> Just a useless song. Do we look for the sense of God's presence being revealed to us? Do we lose our faith? Do we say, hey, that's it, I'm done with church? Do we find any hope is sucked from our life? Do we find that new hope enters our life and fills our mind and inner spirit? Remember the man on the roof. Was he looking for some superhero to rescue him? As a parish minister for many years, I, I still remain member of a Mennonite family who were not members of our church. And when they heard about a family that had been totally burned out, they did the unusual thing. They would gather clothing together and make sure it was taken. They'd, even if they didn't know the people, it was their family's policy to take some clothes over to the people. But they were unusual. They didn't take what they didn't need. The parents and their children would choose one of the newest outfits they'd purchased and put that in a gift, and then they would take some very gently used clothing and take it over to the family in need. This family also knew tragedy because they had a child killed in an absolutely bizarre farming accident. And they were God's answer of prayer to many, many people. I was blessed when I was serving in a different parish where their policy was if 
there was a fire or a tragedy or an extended illness where the family had to journey miles and back and forth to the hospital, that family, regardless of whether they were well-to-do or on public aid, would receive a check from the church towards their extra expenses. Now, if the family wanted to pay it back, they could. I never knew about that. It was totally in the quiet. And if they wanted to pay it back when the insurance was settled, okay. If not, our parish had done the right thing. Perhaps you have experienced the presence of a God-sent person. Remember the man on the roof. Sometimes when a man or a woman just arrived in your life at the right time, at the right place, unannounced, unexpected, but they were there. Sometimes you found out you were the Army, Navy, or Air Force. You were the angel that showed up for someone else who had been calling to a God they didn't think was listening, and you were the answer to their prayer. As I conclude, do you believe God is with you? Do you believe that there may be an answer coming when you call to God and it doesn't seem that God is at home? It doesn't seem that God is listening. Remember the man on the roof. You may, you may be the one who prays. You may be the one who is the answer to that prayer in someone's life. So let it be. And Lord God, there are times when we are the answer to others' prayers. And there are times when we are the receivers of courage and comfort and love. Please help us be aware of divine messengers when it seems that you aren't responding. And we will be blessed when that happens. Amen. <laughs>